Hello everybody, Chris here, and welcome to the Operation New Blood recap. Hard to believe that we're in the second season of Year 9, as it's, it's felt so long with Deadly Omen, but here we are. <laughs> so getting into this, the release date of Operation New Blood will be June 11th, two weeks from now, and the test server will be open quote-unquote next week, as they didn't give a date, but we can assume that it's this week, the 27th, throughout to the release date of the new season. <laughs> So, on to the main course of this season, the Operator Remasters of Recruit. Uh, we all love our boy Recruit, but now he has somewhat evolved into something a little more interesting, perhaps. <laughs> Striker and Sentry are the new recruits coming to Siege, and Striker is the attacking recruit that is a 2 health, 2 speed, and has the primaries of the M4 Assault Rifle from Maverick, and the M249 LMG, along with the 5.7 pistol and the ITA-12S secondary shotgun. Now along with that, you'll see in this picture that there is a load of gadgets to choose from, from stun grenades, frag grenades, smoke grenades, breach charges, hard breaches, EMPs, and claymores. A lot, to say the least. Well, if you thought that was a lot, well, let's take a look at Sentry, the defending recruit, who will have the MH-70 shotgun, along with the Commando 9 from Mozzie, although there's no silly reload though. And alongside those two, the C-75 auto secondary and the super shorty will be available. But for their gadgets, you will have access to impact grenades, barbed wire, proximity alarms, bulletproof cameras, deployable shields, nitro cell, and an observation blocker. Both of these recruits have some pretty nice options for weapon choices and gadgets, so I'm pretty curious and looking forward to playing them in this new season, and also not to mention as well that they are fully customizable, so that's a very good bonus as well. Now onto the balancing side of things, the long-awaited Fenrir and Solace nerfs are here. Now as we saw with SI earlier this year, uh, Solace is in part 1 of her two-part balance update, and with part 1 coming with this new season, her glasses will no longer work in prep phase, and it will allow for the attackers to set up their drones and such without her cat ear glasses detecting your drone. <laughs> now along with this, once she can use her glasses in the action phase, she can still detect drones, but only when they're being used, so more time to keep your drones alive and hide them away so that she can't see them when they're not active. <laughs> Now going forward more with her glasses, instead of it being 20 seconds for the duration, it is now reduced to 10 seconds for the usage of her device, and it also must be at 100% charge before using again. And as if bullying her wasn't enough, the range of her glasses is reduced too, along with impact grenades being removed and being replaced by proximity alarms instead. Ouch. Now moving on to Fenrir's changes, he will now have 4 mines instead of 5, and 2 codes instead of 3, making it a little more selective to where you want to put your mines and where to really activate them. But if your mines are disabled or destroyed, you'll get one of those codes back, which is pretty nice. Oh, and also, you'll have to really be selective and careful to where you put those mines, as they are no longer bulletproof and now vulnerable as well. And on top of this, Fenrir will also have his barbed wire taken away and replaced by observation blockers, which is a little thing to help preserve those gadgets at the same time. Damn, that was long. Holy hell. Anyways, to balance that out, let's get into some more interesting things. So first off, the marketplace that released earlier this year to those who signed up in November of last year will now be fully launching to everybody on June 25th. There's nothing real special to get access to it, all you just pretty much have to be is level 25 or higher to get access. It is finally great to see this get released, um, especially, you know, to the general public, because it is a great way to really get new things and also sell your old stuff as well and really just purchase old cosmetics from other seasons. It's very nice. Now along with this, there will also be certain additions to the Marketplace UI, such as, you know, item recommendations and price histories over the years, so that'll be very nice to see as well. <laughs> now, moving on to what I think is quote-unquote the skeptical feature coming to Siege, in my eyes, is the new Rainbow Six membership. In this picture, where you will probably get distracted by Warden, shows what rewards you can get from this, and if we look at 
the left side, if you enroll before June 27th, you get a Mozzie bundle for the first drop, but you also get 10 Battle Pass level skips and a Bravo pack, and also a Legendary Warden skin as well. <laughs> now it also says here if you enroll through June 11th through the 18th, for bonus rewards, you also get an Ash skin along with 600 R6 credits, not too shabby. Now overall, the idea of a membership in Siege is quite interesting to say the least. I just don't really know what to think about it. I, I honestly think the year pass was a lot better, but we'll just have to see how it turns out, how the prices are, and how it'll play out. I'm still kind of on the fence with it, but... In general, I think it's just more for the diehard players of Siege and, you know, who just want a little more, which I can understand. Now, moving on to more stuff throughout this reveal, there will be an addition of an arcade mode for a limited time that you may actually not remember. It's the Attrition Game Mode, released originally in Steel Wave, Summer 2020, where every round the operators that are played both on attack and defense are eliminated for the rest of the match. Now staying with the modes, there will be a map filtering tool in the standard playlist, and what this is basically you can use it to select if you want all maps in Siege, or if you want ranked maps, or if you want non-ranked maps in your rotation when you're searching for a standard game. And yes, that is Stadium 2020 you're seeing right there. And actually, speaking of Stadium, there actually is small changes on both the 2020 and 2021 versions of these maps, where now the bulletproof glass on these maps have been removed from the objective sites, so unfortunately, no more making friends through those silly windows. <laughs> Along with that, there is some tweaks with new doors linking to other rooms, like for instance, servers and showers are now linked on Stadium 2021 instead of the bulletproof glass being there and just a soft wall. The HUD for spectating is getting changed as well. Not a lot to say here as I don't really pay attention to it too much, but it looks okay. I think the previous one was fine in general, but with this new HUD, it does give a lot of more information for the viewers to know during prep phase or action phase, so not too bad. Now versus AI is getting more changes, or really as I should say, more additions. The two maps that are being added here are Coastline and Night Haven, solid choices. Four attackers are being added as well, from Ace, Hibana, Blackbeard, and Deimos, along with two defenders, Vigil and Thunderbird. Now onto one of my favorite things from this reveal, is a change to the map training playlist. Now they will be adding a endless drill mode, where we can train for 60 minutes uninterrupted, navigating the map to take down dummies. I've really gotten used to the map training playlist over the past months, so this is really great to see, as, you know, the regular ones end pretty fast, so can't wait to try it out. And to really top this off, uh, Fenrir got an Elite that is available now, and honestly, I dig it. I really do, and I, I really do like the design, although it does feel strange to me, though, because he's been out for almost an entire year now, and he somehow got an Elite before people like Maestro, which is pretty insane to me. <laughs> And that is pretty much it for this season, Operation New Blood. Uh, to basically sum this up, it's quite interesting than I thought it would be, but at the same time, there just feels like something missing from it. I can't really describe it, I guess because really there's not really a new operator this season and not really a new map, it's just all around just feels kind of weird. Deadly Omen was a pretty good season overall, and I kind of hope that this season is still as fun, even though there's not really a lot of new things. I really hope that at least we can still have fun with it, have some silliness within it. I hope you all found this recap somewhat useful, and if you did, any form of support is appreciated, like sharing to others, it would help out a lot. Now I hope you all have a great and fantastic day going forward, and without further ado, I will see you all on the next video. Goodbye.